How are there folks? Welcome into tonight's video. Exciting video for you here today. I am going to show you in depth in my Patreon portfolio and talk about each and every one of these stocks up here. Okay, first off, this portfolio is already up 17%. We just started at the beginning of the year. And since the beginning of the year, the Dow is only up 2%. So we're absolutely crushing the Dow. The SP 500, which usually the benchmark you want to, you know, compare yourself to in the market uh, to kind of see how you're doing over time. The SP 500 is up 6.6%. Once again, we're up over 17%. And the NASDAQ's up 13%. So we're crushing every single one of the indexes. And I believe I am crafting here the one of the top portfolios in the world. No, not one of the top. I believe I'm craft, crafting the best portfolio in the world. And I understand some might disagree with that, and that's perfectly fine. We can uh, agree to disagree, right? But I want to take you guys through this portfolio, show you the stocks I own in this portfolio, talk about those stocks. I own a mixture of growth, value, and dividend stocks. And if you're talking about outperforming the market over time, and if you're talking about you know performing even in time periods of, uh, let's call it an uncertain market, uncertain times, you're going to need a, a good a good amount of growth stocks, value stocks, and dividend stocks, because there's going to be certain time periods when growth stocks are obviously we're in a risk on market, and those are doing quite well, right? There's going to be other certain time periods in the stock market where those ones just aren't gaining. They're either losing you money or they're not making you any money, right? And they're just kind of stagnating. But meanwhile, those dividend stocks can kind of pick up the slack there and um, likely throw you off money. And a lot of times when people rotate out of essentially growth stocks, they rotate into value stocks. So sometimes you can get some really nice gains and appreciation there. Sometimes those stocks can get overvalued, and then you can basically move that money into growth stocks. So yeah, we're going to go through this entire portfolio. I appreciate everybody joining me. I won't show this portfolio again until 2024, unless you're part of the Patreon squad, which that is a no brainer. I don't care if you've been investing for 10 days or 10 years, you have to be part of the Patreon squad. We're about to hit a thousand members next month. We're one of the fastest growing Patreons literally in the world right now. And, uh, you know, to see me build out a portfolio from scratch, and see every single buy and sell I ever make in that portfolio is uh, all the value in the world. Okay, you have to have to join that. It is a no brainer for 10 bucks a month. There's nothing you're going to pay 10 bucks a month for. I can tell you that would be more valuable than that. Okay, nothing in this world. So make sure you join us in there and uh, you'll get to see every single move I make in there and get to support the channel. And I appreciate y'all. Let's get into this, guys. Uh, we're going to get into this here today and uh, we'll talk about each and every one of these stocks. Okay, so. First out, starting off at the top here, Tesla, my Nestle, uh, by the way, I use Fidelity Investments for my portfolios. That's what I prefer. It's what I started with. They've always had great customer service, so it's still what I use to today, okay? Uh, Tesla, my Nestle is the stock that has the biggest gain, and I kind of, uh, I just basically sorted these top gains to uh, losses, okay? And we do have a couple red stocks in this portfolio. I'll show you those as well, okay? So Tesla is our top gainer right now. It's sitting on 102% gain as of right now, $103. We got it pretty close to the lows here. The low for Tesla was 101, so we got it pretty darn close nonetheless, right? And uh, in regards to Tesla, this is a, uh, a stock I wouldn't mind buying more shares of over time. It's just the portfolio is really small. I only have $150 to play with each week with this portfolio, right? I can only put in $150 every week, every Friday, and I make my moves in there. So although I would like to buy more Tesla shares, the issue I have is it's already almost 17% of the portfolio. And if you know me, you know I love to stay diversified. That's always been my name of the game, right? And that's what gets me through some tough stocks sometimes that don't work out, right, is diversification and owning a good mixture of growth value and dividend stocks. And so when I look at Tesla, I'm like, I kind of want to buy more because honestly, even at 208, it's still a deal for a long-term investment in my opinion. But with that being said, I can't, I can't overweight it. If I was to buy another share of that, right? If we're talking about a whole share, uh, well, one, I would have to save up for a little bit in here, but two, like think about how big of a part of the portfolio, then we're talking about 34% of the portfolio, you know, it's just uh, the weighting would get too large there. So ultimately Tesla will likely stay at uh, one share for at least the, uh, the moment. Okay. As far as meta, and by the way, I might set up this account over time so I can buy fractional shares, which is certainly a potential since I can only buy $150. Like let's say I wanted to buy a thousand dollar stock. I couldn't even technically do it because I'm only buying for $150 uh, a week in this portfolio, right? Right? And so even if I was getting paid dividends and all that stuff, like it's not going to add up to enough. So I might set up so I can buy fractional shares in here as well. Because some of these stocks are starting to get, you know, priced too high for $150. Another example, that's Meta, right? Now, in terms of Meta, I'm perfectly fine with my positioning here. Meta is still a steel deal, and I'm still willing to buy that stock in my other portfolios. But in terms of Patreon portfolio, I'll likely keep this one uh, basically 
kind of positioned exactly where I'm at right now. It's 14% of the portfolio. We're already up 27% on this stock. I think this is just the start of the gains when it comes to Meta. This one's going back to $300, $400 over the next couple of years, in my opinion. So yeah, long long runway of growth in front of Meta and um, de-risked in terms of downside. Sure, could it move down in the short term? Sure. But I can tell you now at this point in time, there's going to be a lot of buyers to step in to buy Meta if it makes any significant downward move, including this guy right here. So uh, yeah, so those are the two biggest gainers in terms of dollar amount right now in the portfolio. And those are the two biggest positions, I, I believe, if I recall, in the portfolio. And these two stocks alone make up over 30% of the portfolio. So I do have a lot riding on these two beasts right here. Okay, let's get into the next two stocks up here. Those are Corsair Gaming in Shopify stock. So in terms of these two, uh, 7.4% 7, 7 of the portfolio is in Corsair Gaming here in regards to this stock, right? Doing pretty well and already up 22% in a pretty short amount of time. We bought Corsair several times in this account so far. And um, so in regards to Corsair, this is a this is a value stock. That's the group I put in. Like you know, it's obviously not a dividend stock. They don't pay a dividend. I wouldn't really put them in the growth category. When I think about growth stocks, I'm thinking about stocks that can grow 10% plus a year easily when it comes to their revenues. It, it, I would put you know Meta kind of flirts in between a value stock and a growth stock. I really still think they're a growth stock, even though Wall Street values them like they're a value stock. And obviously Tesla's a growth stock, okay. And obviously Shopify is a growth stock, okay. And we'll talk about that one in just a moment. But Corsair, I put them in the value territory. Uh, a very attractive active forward P on this company. I think they're going to they're going to increase their margins quite significantly this year. They're going to increase their profitability quite significantly this year. Their cash flow and their revenue is going to start trending back up again in 2023. So essentially like everything you could possibly want to go better for Corsair in 2023 is going to play out for this company. And their innovation's been very very strong on the Corsair side and on the Elgato side, which is their streaming. They make cameras, microphones, all types of different equipment in, in regards to their Elgato brand. Plus they own Scuff Gaming, which makes custom controllers that are pretty popular if you're into gaming uh you know like you know ps5 and the new xbox and stuff like that you you might have considered buying a scuff uh, gaming controller before if you're like really really into that so nonetheless corsair is looking really really good and uh really really excited for 2023 for corsair and in the future they just had to deal with a crap ton of a mess in, in 2022, like everything that could have gone bad for Corsair went bad in 2022, just to be quite frank. Okay. Shopify fourth stock up here in regards to portfolio. It makes up only 3.5% of the portfolio here <clears throat> in regards to Shopify. Sitting on a nice big gain in regards to Shopify though. Uh, you know, 21% gain already for good old shop. I mean, that's pretty darn good. Okay. That's very, very good. Uh, I'll say that. And so shop's actually a position I would like to build bigger in the portfolio. And even though it's up significantly, 21% move is, is a lot. I honestly want to build this one bigger. I would love to own, you know, three to five shares of shop within the next uh, few months in regards to this portfolio. I would love to get the sizing of shop, something similar to kind of the meta Tesla territory. I, I think shop has a, you know, that's another company that just had to deal with a gauntlet of bad stuff in 2022, a bunch of one-time costs and one-time hits to, you know, some investment losses, one-time hits to uh, employee layoffs. I mean, plus the huge slowdown in e-commerce, uh, overhired. I mean, they just, they had the gauntlet thrown at them like many companies did. And uh, I think 2023 is going to be a year where shop really turns it around and really starts to show you the the profitability. And, and when you listen to Toby talk on the latest conference call, do you know what Toby said? Toby basically talking about efficiency, profitability in regards to business model. That's what his focus is now. And so he was very Zuckerberg-ish. If you heard Zuckerberg talk on the latest conference call from Meta, he's talking about he's focused on profitability moving forward. He's talking about he's focused on efficiency for the company moving forward, working faster, smarter with a smaller team, which means bottom line. And I see the same exact thing playing out with Shopify, maybe not to quite the extent of Meta, but um, yeah, I think Shopify, I think long-term Shopify is going to be one of the most profitable companies in terms of how much of their money from the top line makes it down to the bottom line. Okay. I think they're going to be one of the most profitable in the world. And I think we'll see that probably within the next five years. And it'll be like, wow, they have 20%, 30% of their revenue going all the way down the bottom line. I think their numbers are going to be absolutely shockingly incredible in regards to Shopify. They're just, uh, you know, they, they overhired just to put it quite frank. And they're obviously investing in their future, which if we know anything about this industry, we know Amazon wrote the book. You gotta invest for your future. And you grow, grow, grow. 
And that's how Amazon's become a trillion dollar plus company. And that's how Amazon's, you know, going to grow into a multi-trillion dollar company. And by the way, speaking about Amazon stock, speaking about that stock, we might come back to Amazon a little later in this video, okay? Next group of stocks up here, Revolve. Revolve, this is one we're up 24% on right now in regards to uh, good old Revolve stock. We only own one share of Revolve, so it's a very small position. It's only 2% of the portfolio, but the percentage in terms of what we gain so far is, is big. Revolve is a growth company. Obviously, you know, slow down a bit here recently in regards to clothing sales. That's hit them, but I can tell you, the gentlemen that run this company, they are so forward looking. They're two of the most impressive gentlemen in terms of just like understanding building out an apparel company and scaling a business like that e-commerce wise. They've done a phenomenal job over the years and I have full faith in that management team. Like sometimes you bet on a company because of the business model. Sometimes it's more of the financial. Sometimes it's more of the management team in terms of what's the main thing. In regards to Revolve, I'll tell you the main component that makes me bet on that stock other than the financials over the past several years and seeing them scale the business and, and uh, you know, the belief in the business model is that management team. Those guys got their stuff together over there at Revolve, okay? So in regards to Revolve, I would love to build this one a little bigger, okay? How big could I build Revolve? Maybe I could build it into, uh, you know, I have four or five shares. So maybe it's like a $100 stock in this portfolio over time. I could see myself getting somewhere like that in regards to Revolve. Palantir, PLTR. This one we're up about 8% so far on. Uh, smaller position in the portfolio makes up about 5% of the weight for the portfolio. We own seven shares as of right now in regards to Palantir. Our cost base is $8.52. Uh, stock's at nine twenty right now. This is another one of those I would definitely like to build out bigger. I would love to build this sizing somewhat similar to Meta and Tesla over time, okay? And just continue to add shares every few weeks, you know, here and there. Obviously, Palantir is a very volatile stock. This stock can make some big moves. So I'll be more aggressive when it's obviously making bigger downward moves, right? Now, you know, in regards to Palantir, this is a stock that was spending a lot of time in the sixes and sevens uh, recently, like, you know, for the last number of months in the sixes and sevens range, okay? Could I see Palantir going back to the six to seven dollar range? My answer to that is, it's a it's a possibility. I would call it a lower probability now at this point in time, even if the market was to weaken, because Palantir is starting to show profitability and because they're talking about uh, profitability in twenty three. You're going to continue to attract, in my in my opinion, a new investor class to Palantir that hasn't even considered that stock in the past. Because obviously no gap profitability. And so, so there's a ton of investors that if you're not gap profitable, they won't even consider you. You're like It doesn't matter what you got going on. It doesn't matter your story. It doesn't matter your revenue growth. It doesn't matter who the CEO is. It doesn't matter your product. If you're, not, if you're not profitable on a gap basis, they'll say, no, we don't want a PCU. And so the fact that Alex Karp and the team believe this company is going to be profitable on a gap basis now, moving forward. And the more and more quarters they put together where they have a gap profitable quarter, the more and more investors are going to flock to the stock, the more and more hedge funds that will start to consider it, funds in general, okay? So it's a possibility, but I would call it a lower probability this one goes back to that 6 to $7 range. And so I'm looking to pick up shares anywhere between 8 and $11 for the stock and significantly. if I'll be happy if it goes back to the 6 and 7s. I'll be more than happy. Like, sweet, go back there, baby. I'd love to get it under my cost basis if, if possible. But, you know, I think that might be um, a little tough to get it back to those 6s and 7s now at this point. So I'll just continue to pick up shares aggressively anything between eight and 12 uh, that's kind of my my ideal price i'll buy it i'll buy palantir by the way all the way up to 16 i'm willing to pay all the way up to 16 dollars for palantir okay next group of stocks up here is my newest one texas roadhouse dividend stock here okay um so so far like what, what are we looking at here we got growth stock we got growth value stock we got value stock growth stock growth stock growth stock, dividend stock, dividend stock, okay? Texas Roadhouse, a recent buy for me, okay? And this makes up almost 8.5% of the portfolio. You know, I got to be honest. I wouldn't mind making Texas Roadhouse the biggest position in the portfolio and continuing to add these to these shares for a while. Why Texas Roadhouse? I should honestly do an in-depth video about Texas Roadhouse. Maybe it will be a stock that will be featured on three stocks I'm buying March uh, 2023 edition. But what I can tell you about Texas Roadhouse is this is arguably the most well-run company in the world. I didn't say one of the best run restaurants in the world. I said one of the best companies, period, in the world. And how do you get to that place where you're one of the best companies in the world? 
management team, how you run your business model, the financials. If you look at their financials over the years, it's a masterpiece. It is a masterpiece on how to run a business at the highest level possible, okay? Absolutely beautiful business model, incredible company, been incredible for a while. It's not like they're new to this. Management team's on top of their game. And um, like I said, they're just, they just, you know, the, one of the best run companies in the world, quite simply. And their stock shows over time. You know, this stock's outperformed even many of the big tech companies over time. And so as a dividend paying company, that's one of the best run companies in the world that's at a fair PE. I wouldn't call Texas Roadhouse undervalued. I also wouldn't call it overvalued. I believe the stock is fairly valued here. I want to continue to pick up shares and I wouldn't mind making this my biggest position because it's that dang good of a company. You know, just they're, they're up there with Tesla. Honestly, they're up there with Tesla, a restaurant chain. And we know Tesla has been arguably the most well-run company for the past three or four years in the world, right? Short sellers will never give them that respect. But that's the truth. Tesla has been one of the best run companies in the last three or four years. Bottom line, look at their financial statements. Look at how that company's grown. Look at how they completely changed an industry and now everybody's trying to play catch up to them. You can't tell me Tesla's not one of the best run companies in the world the past three or four years. And I would tell you, Texas Roadhouse was right in that, that camp. And Texas Roadhouse has been executed for over a decade now, just on an insanely high level, okay? Foot Locker. So in regards to Foot Locker, uh, this is just a solid dividend company. I'd put them into the value dividend territory, right? Usually trading at, you know, four P's of the 10 range, somewhere around there, sometimes a little under. This is one I wouldn't mind adding a few more shares of. This one throws off really nice dividend money. I think Foot Locker pays about a, oh gosh, Foot Locker is probably about a 4%, 5% dividend yield somewhere in there recently. And so, yeah, this one I would love to continue to buy. And this is just one of those stocks, you know, it's going to throw me off dividend money. And what do I do with that dividend money? Do I go buy something with it? No, I reinvest that right back in the stock. So they're going to pay me money every three months just for holding that stock, along with obviously many of these other stocks. So yeah, like Foot Locker. What's the next group of stocks up here? The next group of stocks are these ones. Estow. Oh yeah, I got a little Estow in here. Okay. We're up very, very slightly on that. Estow. It's a hedge. So something I'm, I'm doing in all my portfolios moving forward, okay? A, a big change of strategy for me in 2022. I got, I got nailed in 2022, man. Absolutely wrecked in 2022. Hardcore, right? And the main reason was I wasn't hedged at all. I went into 2022 all long positions, all long positions. Nothing short, no inverse ETFs, nothing. So as the market got hammered, right? As a NASDAQ at the lows was down 37 plus percent. At the lows in NASDAQ was down over 37%. Guess who didn't capitalize at all on that? This guy right here. And so the one thing I learned moving forward is I gotta have some sort of hedge on. Just in case things go way ugly, right? I have a hedge on that I can go ahead, profit from that, and then go ahead and flip that into stocks at really low prices. And that's my plan with any of my hedges I have on in the market, which I have different ones in different portfolios. But any of my hedges, my plan is if the market tanks in any significant way at all this year, is I'll go ahead and flip those into essentially uh, long positions if the market got really, really hammered at any point in time, okay? And so whether that's SDAL, whether that's calls on SDAL, whether that's SH, any of that, okay? And so that's kind of the plan there. And so when it comes to SDAL, I could potentially buy some more. The the thing is, the Dow hasn't really been doing much. I just showed you guys the year of the day, it's up like 2%. So I've kind of been like hoping that that the Dow in general goes up more and gets more bubblicious. But we've just gone into this year where a lot of these Dow stocks were trading very bubblicious, just to be quite frank. And so I'm kind of like waiting around to see like, you know, does it have another upward move? If it, if the Dow does have another upward move in any significant way, I'll buy a little more S Dow in this account to hedge the portfolio. And by the way, if anybody's wondering S Dow, it's basically just a three X leverage inverse to the Dow essentially. Okay. On that given day, that is on that given day. Okay. So let's say the market on a given day was down, you know, 1% S Dow would be up 3%. Okay. Next up here, Walgreens Boots Alliance, another dividend stock I have in this portfolio. I have three shares here. It makes up almost 9% of the portfolio. It, we're right around break even for this one right now, slightly green. I would love to add some more WBA, huge dividend paying company, solid business model, nothing crazy. Yeah, it's no Shopify, it's no Tesla, it's no, it's nothing like that, okay? But I believe Ross Brewer will do a really good job running this company. She just completed her first year with the company. Uh, you know, usually when a CEO comes over a company, you really see the impact 
for the positive or negative, really in year two or year three. And so I'm really excited to see, you know, how, how she obviously makes his business better over this next couple of years and performs. And I have faith that she'll perform very well because prior to uh, Walgreens, she was she worked extremely high up for Starbucks and very high up for Amazon. Okay, so you're talking about somebody in Roz Brewer who has a lot of experience at two of the most successful companies in the world, right? Uh, Amazon and Starbucks. So I'm sure she's learned a lot and I'm sure she's ready for prime time. And that first year is just kind of getting things in order, getting everything figured out. And then year two and year three are really about executing. And I believe my thought is I'll see nice share appreciation in regards to WBA and nice dividend uh, gains on the stock uh, over the next several years. And so, yeah. I'll just plug those dividend that dividend money back into either more shares of WBA or uh, more shares of other stocks in general. Okay, so yeah, so far we got growth, we got growth value, we got value, growth, 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 uh, dividend, dividend, hedge, dividend. Okay, and in regards to these dividends, these are also kind of value plays as well. Okay, what's the last group of stocks up here? Well, one I told you I'll give you a little Easter egg earlier. What is it? It is Amazon. So Amazon stock is one of our two red stocks right now in this portfolio. We're down about 1.3% on this one. It is a big position for us in this portfolio. Very, very large. Almost 16% of the portfolio is uh, in Amazon stock. Okay, so quite significant in regards to this one. And um, the thing with Amazon is I really actually want to build out the position bigger. And Amazon is, by the way, I put Amazon into the growth category without question. You're talking about e-commerce business. You're talking about Amazon Web Services. You're talking about Whole Foods. You're talking about Twitch. You're talking about their massive advertising business, plus so much more in regards to Amazon that, um, you know, this is a definitely a position I would like to build bigger. I'm just kind of going to run into the same issue here that I have with Meta and Tesla in the short term where I'm like, do I end up putting too many eggs in one basket, right? Because, I mean, you're, it's already 16%. So if I was to add another share of Amazon, I'm up to like 20, 20 something percent of the portfolio then at that point in time would be in Amazon shares. So that's something I do have to worry about in regards to Amazon. I want to get too uh, under diversified here. And then Honest is our biggest losing position as of right now. Long term, I do think it will be our biggest winning position. I know that sounds crazy right now, but I think this stock will outperform every other stock in this portfolio over the next three years. We'll see. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Okay. I just truly 100% believe in this company, okay? And um, I believe it's my next elf. I really do. It, I may be wrong, and I could be, but I just, everything I look into this company, like, I think their margins are going to explode over this next few years upward. I think their profitability, I think they're going to get to gap profitability really, really quickly here, much more quickly than I think anybody's expecting. And uh, then I think they're going to scale net income very, very quickly from there. And so, I don't know. I think they're going to, I think they're going to have a very similar trajectory that elf has had, which we know elf has been one of my biggest... I think it, Elf is my biggest winning stock as a percentage basis, even eclipsing Tesla in, my, in, in the public account, right? So that's kind of where everything's at in regards to this portfolio. I'll show you guys this portfolio, everybody, again in 2024. If you're part of the Patreon squad, obviously, you get to see the portfolio every single week. And you get to obviously see every single buy and sell I ever make in this portfolio over time. And I believe I am building out the ultimate portfolio when it comes to growth, value, and dividend stocks. And I believe I'm building out a portfolio that's going to absolutely, um, you know, be a beast. Let's just call it that. Be a beast. And I think it's going to weather markets very well in the future, down markets. And I think it's going to, you know, we already seen it's already significantly outperforming all the indexes already. And uh, I think that's just a, a uh, start of things. We'll see how it transpires over time. But I appreciate everybody joining me as always. Make sure you get in that Patreon. That is going to be the pinned comment down there. We're going to hit 1,000 patreons uh in march at some point in time and then we're going to scale it to several thousand and build one of the biggest patreon communities out there so i appreciate everybody that supports on there much love as always and have a great day